Welcome back, and welcome here to Mount Hog in Papua New Guinea. I've only taken you guys here just a handful of times in the past three years. It's been probably at least two years since I've even been here. We're at the MF drop-off. I had one passenger coming from Yifki. I'm on to Goroka now, just another 25, 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and pull up tower. Hogan Tower, Nova Bank Kilo, start advised for Goroka, one POB. Nova Tango Kilo, Hagen Tower, copy Scott. UNH 1020. 1020. Our fuel on. First thing I'm looking at is my ITT. It's over 200. Wait for it to get underneath 200 before introducing my fuel. Because we just shut down about 10 minutes ago, ITT is going to come up a bit quicker. NG is coming up just as normal. Over 35, I'm looking at ITT. Hugging If their ATIS actually does work, 128.9. Mount Hagen Airport, information Charlie. Time, 0158 Zulu. Arrival 12, departure 12. Wind, 090 degrees, 3 knots. Cloud, broken 3,000 feet. Temperature, 22. Q point, 17. QMH. One zero two zero. Tower, November Tango Kilo, requesting taxi Goroka one POB with information Charlie requesting Midway or correction Alpha intersection departure. November Tango Kilo, copy taxi runway one to via Alpha, line up to section Alpha. Taxi to Alpha and line up runway one two, November Tango Kilo. It was just a quick little stop dropping off one passenger that I had from Yifki, just a standby guy that just showed up and said, hey, I want to go here. I was already heading back this way, maybe like a two minute out of my way, stopped through here and I had enough fuel, so why not, right? All right, ignition, inlets and lights are all done. I've already done the rest of my checklist items. I can tell you, I told Charlie, run your request engine to start uh, Korean run, maybe. We're clear the lineup. No, oh, Pemberton Kilo ready and lineup. Pemberton Kilo intersection now for one two, make a left turn, clear for takeoff. So for takeoff, left turn, one two, no, Pemberton Kilo. All right, ignition condition, flaps 20. I can tell you, I told Charlie Romeo. Fuel and harnesses. 20 seconds. Charlie Romeo, Tom? Here, request uh, engine start, ground run, heavy lift, please. 1380. Charlie Romeo, copy, start on discretion, QNH 1020. Kilo Sierra, Tango, start complete quest taxi. All right, here speeds alive. We're continuing. Kilo Sierra, Tango, taxi via taxi Bravo, holding point runway one two. And taxi right. holding point Bravo for runway one two. Kilo Sierra, Tango. And Hagen Tower, Alpha Tango, Foxtrot, start advisory for Port Moresby via the Wagi. Alpha Tango, Foxtrot, Hagen Tower, copy start. QNH one zero two zero. 1020, Alpha Tango, Foxtrot. All right, we're going to head through the Cooley Gap. I think that's the gap that's called right there. Let's go 10 degrees of flaps. Now that we're over 300 feet. Zero degrees. I can tell. Hey, okay, let's go ahead and bring our prop zero. on back. Yankee. I request taxi. We have Charlie 1020. Mr. Yankee, taxi, Vatex Bravo, holding point, runway 1. Holding point, Bravo, runway 1, 2, Kilo Sierra Yankee. I guess I'm probably just stay below 9 or 1,000, so let's say we departed time 1, 5. Hawking Tower, November, Tango. Kilo departed time 1, 5. We'll be tracking 0, 9 or 9 around climb below 9 or 1,000. Estimating Goroka time 4, 1. Thank four one. November Tango Kilo copy departure one five east of Hagen contact mostly on one two zero decimal one. No contact six five nine or eight. One two zero one six five nine or eight at one five. No November Tango Kilo good day. Good day. Morsby one two zero one November Tango Kilo transfer. Oh, looks like we're gonna try him with the HF. 
Moresby 6598, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, Moresby 6598, reading you in three, stand by. Looking, looking ahead and kind of planning out my plan of action here for being able to get into the Groca Valley. Typically this time of day, we've got a lot of low clouds that come in over this area right here. Looking ahead, it does look like that, but it also looks like I can maybe get underneath of them. So as I'm getting closer, I'm going up to 9,000 right now just to cool it off in here. And then I'll probably drop on, that's almost 9,000. Then I'll probably drop on back down to 7,000 after it cools off for the next 10 or 15 minutes. So if I cannot get through this way, I have two options. No, I'm going kilo currently 1.5 miles to the east of Hog at 9,000, estimating Goroka time 4-2. Copy, Sierra Delta Alpha 3-2, Goroka, November, Nick Kilo. One zero zero eight. One zero zero eight. No, if I cannot get through there, I've got two options. One, I can go up to I think fourteen thousand feet. Let's see, right here. Yep, fourteen thousand feet, which is a huge pain because then I have to drop back down nine thousand feet once I get into the Groca Valley just a couple minutes later. So that's not really a great option. It is an option. The other option is to follow the lowest path down into Garoka, basically following all the valleys and things like that. So there's this big river down here that gets me all around there. Hopefully I don't do that because that's kind of out of my way as well today. But as we get closer, we'll kind of reassess, figure out what's the best plan of action to get into Garoka the easiest, with the least amount of thinking involved, because it is Friday. What I need to do is I need to text our helicopter that's behind me coming back up to Garoka to let him know what the weather's looking like. He's a lot slower. He has to remain VFR, which means he's not allowed to go through clouds. So as I've been coming along, I'm kind of giving him weather reports all along the way so that he can continue to feel comfortable <laughs> going along this way. We're going to do aircraft, November Tango Mike. All right, weather looks good from Wagi on. This is the Wagi Valley. Light rain on the north mountains north of Chimbu, which is all this dark area up here, but the valley's open. Go ahead, November to Kilo. Copy additional traffic, November to Kilo. As the day goes on, you guys can see there's a dark patch of rain right here. The valley will slowly start to close in and then make this really difficult to get onto Garoka. You can usually still do it. I mean, in worst case, you can go up to 14,000 feet. But it looks like it's just going to be like a clear path all the way to Garoka today. Looks like there's some lightning strikes up here. How far away are those? Let's see. 22 miles. That's right up at Dalo Pass, so maybe there is, so maybe we'll take this low route in here, I don't know. Once we get a little bit closer, we'll take a look. If it's clear, then it's maybe some lightning way up high. But if it does look like a potential rain like here, then maybe what we'll do is we'll just swing down this lower valley. It's a beautiful valley. Got amazing waterfalls to look at, so I mean, I don't care. Fine with me. Once we get around this last cloud, then I'll have a better picture if those lightning strikes were maybe up high or if there is some some rain and some weather right ahead or not. I just can't really tell right now. All right, time to drop on down to 8,000 feet at least. November Tango go ahead. no additional Additional traffic contact tower one five no from Tankilo. Alright, one one eight decimal seven for Tower Garoka. We're almost at fifteen miles now or twenty-four miles. 
I'm seeing all the way into the Garoka Valley, so maybe there's some rain right here that I still can't quite see yet around this corner, but it looks like I'm looking all the way into the Garoka Valley, and it looks beautiful, so I'm not really sure what those lightning strikes were. There's a plane coming out through the Caw Caw Gap. Uh, I guess there is some rain right here in the Dalo area, so yeah, maybe they were lightning strikes in there. We'll just stay off to the right of it. Uh, Great calculation, Sierra Lima. We departed at 32. <coughs> uh, we're tracking 278, we're on climb 16000, passing 12000. Kilo Sierra Lima, thanks, 16000. Contact between 120 decimal 1 at 15. 15 miles, 120 decimal 1. Kilo Sierra track for the call call that's going to keep us you know 10 miles or so away from where those lightning strikes were it looks like it's pretty decently heavy rain over here uh, but that's not even really where we need to go we do need to go right this way but we're just going to extend it out just a little bit further and then cut in and which will line us up for a nice a left base actually now that i've kind of passed the rain we'll actually head for the the water boom app because it doesn't look like there's any weather right here so those lightning strikes must have been in this area right up there if you're wondering what water boom means it means kind of like the headwaters where all the water starts and like it joins together Crow the tower november tango kilo november tango kilo crew tower i wouldn't drink a little house I've been enrolling November 10 Kilo, 15 miles to the west, 8,000, tracking for the water bung. Your circuit, 4 2. November 10 Kilo, Ryan, I've been on through, runway 35 right, wind uh, east, south, east, LA, 5 knots, QNH 1018, and circuit left base, uh, put again left base. 1018, tracking port left base, 35 right, November 10 Kilo. If you guys would like to fly the same route like Mount Hog and Agaroka or Yifki to Mount Hog or whatever else, I posted a ton of these. I think almost like a hundred flights on my Patreon page with like charts and landing charts, different things like that. So you guys can recreate a lot of these really cool flights from your home sim, whether a Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane. I even got a lot of the airstrips that are not available um with the game uh downloads that you guys can add into your game and stuff so check out that i've got some really cool deals going on for you guys as well uh where you guys can get a lot of really cool free stuff like you know my coffee table book right here um i have that i'm actually running some cool deals on that as well definitely got some rain on the other side of the garoka valley not really an issue for me potentially our helicopter is going to be coming back here in maybe 45 minutes Valley's still pretty open though, so I'm thinking that those are probably just going to be rained out pretty soon though. Just slow on down a little bit as we come through this turbulent area. It's only five or six knots, but man, does it get rough sometimes. So we get a little bit further away from the mountains because the wind's coming up. So we can add our power back in and speed right back up. I am up in November Tingle and taxi to run a one seven right and cross one seven left and line up. And no additional traffic reported uh, OCTA. Corridor traffic and clear taxi one seven right cross one seven left to line up now for November Tingle. Looking to see where that airplane is. If I need to join into a downwind or because he's probably gonna call up about the same time that I'm joining in. Uh, it doesn't even look like he's pulled out of the parking bay yet. Traffic tower, November, Tango, Kilo, three mile left, base, three five right. November, Tango, Kilo, number one eight, three five right, clear to land. Clear to land, three five right, November, Tango, Kilo. Okay. Uh, he's just now lining up, so we're entering our base now. Prop forward, just keeping my speeds up for him so that he's not sitting at the end of the runway forever. How annoying that is. 138 knots, let's go 10 degrees of flaps. A little bit of sprinkles here, so yeah, hopefully Stuart doesn't have too much problems getting in here. Turn final about 5,600 feet. Go 10 or 20 degrees of flaps below 120. 
And below 108, full flaps, checklist is complete. And final. Looks like we'll have about, uh, almost eight knots across one. Oh, nine knots across one. Double tank is ready. Alpha November 10, line up uh, and wait. Uh, November 10 kilos on short, short final. Okay, we started up the tanker, a lot of points. There's 11 knots crosswind. Now turning into a tailwind. Three knots tailwind, two knots tailwind, kind of bouncing around. The highest I've ever had is a 22 knot quartering tailwind on landing air. It's crazy. It's 12 knots, a little bit of wind shear. I go up to the thousand foot. Twelve foot zoom thing off. In turn, Rene one turn right, make left turn, cliff for takeoff. One turn right, cliff for takeoff, and make left turn out for another takeoff. Alright, touchdown was like a twelve knot crosswind. And a six knot tailwind. If you're wondering, why are you landing with the tailwind? Well, it's because it's a one way strip, there's nothing else to do. Thank you for joining me on this flight, you guys. Be sure to share this with your friends, other people that you might think on Reddit or wherever else you guys think might enjoy this kind of content. I've got tons of cool videos on my channel, so check them out. If not, if you're not a subscriber yet, it's free, so consider joining the flight group. And see you guys my next flight.